Hello, welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. Today we're going to use a electronic E6B, the ASA brand CX3, and we're going to do a little more complicated problem so that we can look at one segment of flight to get our wind correction, to get our magnetic course for a leg, to get the fuel burn, and to get the time all in one thing. Now I'm not going to unpack how to get all those pieces of information together, like how to find the magnetic variation in an area. I'm not going to talk about that, but I'm going to talk about this as if you have all these inputs and I'm not going to talk about how to use um, the computer to get your true airspeed from Mach number. I have other videos on that, so check those out. But let's get started with this hypothetical example that we're going to do. We're going to Use a winds aloft of 180 degrees. Winds aloft are given in um, true. And so winds aloft of 180 at 60 knots. And we're going to assume we're in an area that has 3 degrees east variation. And the airplane we have figured out is going 460 knots. This distance we're trying to travel is 192 nautical miles. And again, we're going to assume we figured out that it's going 352 degrees true course. And it's a large aircraft like the Boeing 737 burning 5,100 pounds an hour. So we have a lot of input. We want to know how long it's going to take, how much fuel it's going to burn, and what should be my magnetic course to fly for this. So from the main menu of your flight computer, um, you're going to hit the plan button. So we hit plan. It's going to basically start making a little trip, which is fine. I'm going to go down with the down arrow to leg one, then press the middle button. And I can start entering all the information. We're going to have to change a few units from the default here. But all right, we said it was 192 nautical miles. And we said we were going to be going 352 degrees true course. Go down off that. The true airspeed, I am going to use 460 knots. Noticing it's in knots, so that's good. My wind direction is 180 at 60 knots. Got that from my winds aloft forecast. Like I mentioned, the variation we're going to use is 3 degrees east. So this is something to notice on these ASA computers, it's, it's not obvious. For any east variation, you have to press the plus minus key to make a negative three. So if it's a west variation, you don't do the negative. If it's east, you do the negative. Okay, deviation. I am not worried about the deviation of my Boeing 737 for aircraft dispatch planning. Do not worry about that. We'll just leave that blank. The fuel rate here is where it says gallons per hour. Mm -mm, I don't want that. I want pounds per hour. So I'm going to click the convert unit button until I get LPH for pounds per hour. And we're going to enter that the airplane is burning 5,100 pounds per hour. Hypothetical rough for the Boeing 737-300. All right, great. So at this point, I can hit the equals. I'm going to just leave out the time of departure in UTC. I, I could put that, but I don't really care at this point. So this is awesome. We get a ground speed of 519.34 knots. Does that make sense? I do want to always check. Well, it does make sense because my tail is almost entirely a tailwind. If I'm going 352, I'm going north, slightly northwest, and the wind is from 180, so it's pushing me along. My true airspeed was 460. And my ground speed is calculated as basically 519 knots. That makes sense. It's faster than my true airspeed. I have a tailwind. Don't worry about the compass heading. That would be if we had deviation. Do not worry for aircraft dispatch purposes. My magnetic heading to fly is going to be 348. Slight wind correction in there. True heading it gives me. The wind correction angle is only negative one degree. Okay, and then the other information I want is my fuel burn, and there it is, 1,885.47 pounds for that part. I'm going to enter that in my flight plan as 1,886. Always just round up to the nearest pound of fuel. And I have an estimated time en route given to me of 22 minutes and 10 seconds. 
I could round that up and say it's 23 minutes. That gives me a little more buffer on the time, but that is it. And so it's very easy to use this as long as you understand the magnetic variation part and as long as you input all the correct things in the correct units. If you don't do the units right, it's gonna screw it up. But I think this is a great computer. Check it out, check out my other videos that I have provided on how to get, for example, your true airspeed from Mach number and a lot of other awesome content from Aviation 101 with Laura. Have a great day.